The onset of COVID-19 pandemic at the beginning of 2020 was an unprecedented event. It caught all of us off guard. Even before the pandemic, misinformation or false information over the internet was a huge problem. During the pandemic, we, re we found out that this is more of a threat in a fluid situation like this when the scientific knowledge is evolving. Something that is true today might be false tomorrow. In such a scenario, how to manage the diffusion of information or knowledge among common people? Because common people are a very important part of curbing such an emergency. So we, scientists from different countries, came together, formed a consortium to see how does an individual's knowledge is associated with factors such as using different information sources, perceiving credibility of those information sources, number of cases that are there in the country or globally, and, and so on. And on the other hand, if somebody has this knowledge or individual has this knowledge, how do they behave or what kind of opinions do they generate? To study this, we constituted an indicator called IKC, Individual's Knowledge of COVID-19. And this was formed of questions, 25 different questions, which were taken from the myths and facts which were disseminated by World Health Organization at that moment. And we put it in a survey and we circulated it among the global internet users. With the help of all the uh, collaborators from 14 different countries and 50 plus volunteers from about 50 different countries, we were able to get 15,500 responses in a matter of few weeks. We got some interesting results. First, even though the survey was conducted among global internet users, we found that people perceived the conventional sources of information, such as TV news and news channel, to be credible, and this was backed by their higher knowledge of COVID-19. On the contrary, people who perceived social media as credible was, were having lower individual knowledge about COVID-19. Second, we, we saw that people are still detached from the global community because when the global number of only the global number of cases were increasing individuals had a lower knowledge as compared to when the number of cases in their own country were increasing so what we can say is that individuals only perceive this threat of perceived this threat of covid-19 when it was close to them but not when it was happening in some other part of the world in conclusion, our study contributed to the scientific literature concerning diffusion of knowledge and diffusion of information, but it also had a lot of practical implications through which we can make recommendations. For instance, we recommend that people should go to multiple sources of information rather than just relying on one source as the credible source to get news regarding any topic. We also recommend that in times of such emergencies, we should avoid discussions in online communities and we should rely on experts, a discussion with experts and our immediate close circle in the real world to get more credible information. We also see that in today's globally connected world, it is recommended to keep yourself updated from what is happening in different parts of the world so that you are prepared for what might or what can happen. For instance, in this case, something was happening uh, in one part of the world and, the, uh, and we did not take notice and then it started happening to us. So we had to immediately take emergency measures. So it's recommended to keep yourself updated from the happenings, uh, global happenings because we are so much closely connected uh, with each other. Detailed results, discussions and conclusion of our study have been published in Journal of Information Processing and Management. I invite you all to read. It is open access, so there are no barriers uh, for to reading it. Please feel free to give us your comments and feedback so we, we could in incorporate and we could learn from you as well. I would like to take this moment to uh, thank all my co-authors who have worked for weeks and months to make this study possible. I would also like to thank all the volunteers who have helped us without any motive, just for the sake of science and for the sake of understanding the situation, helped us in translating in 27 different languages, uh, circulating the survey to get more number of responses, all without any financial motive or any personal benefit motive. 
So we have mentioned all of them in the acknowledgement sections of the article, so I, I would like to invite you to please have a read uh, at that as well. Once again, thank you everybody and I wish you all a healthy and safe time.